I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular meeting of Garden City Planning Commission. This is Thursday, March 14th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. If everyone would stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Would the secretary take the roll call, please? Chairperson May? Here. Commissioner Steenberg? Commissioner Walls? Here. Mr. Kalidas? Here. Mr. King? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. Mr. Bozzi? Quorum of five. Okay. Uh, the next order. Our next item is uh, approval of the agenda. If we could have a motion, please. I make a motion we approve the agenda. The agenda. Second. Motion made and supported. Any comments or corrections on the motion? Hearing none, take the roll, please. Mr. Cleus? Aye. Mr. Walls? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Chippers and May? Aye. Okay, next we need approval of minutes for the regular meeting of February 8th, 2024. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the regular meeting of February 28th, 2024. Okay, we have a motion and support. Any comments or corrections? Just take the roll, please. Mr. King? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalidas? Aye. Mr. Walls? Chairperson? Aye. Motion passes by the Okay, next item is public comments on non-agenda items only. These are any items that aren't on the agenda that someone in the audience would wish to come forward and speak about concerning that. Uh, do I see anyone interested in speaking on a non-agenda item? Uh, seeing no one, we'll move on. Our next business item is city-initiated request to rezone the following properties. We have 1858, 1740, 1724, 1715, 1658, and 1244 Middle Belt Road from 01 to C1 local business. And then we have 29233 John Hawk and 29235 Hennepin from 01 to R1, single family residence. And 2041 Middle Belt from C3 general business and parcel number 35-016-2021. Zero zero three nine dash three zero two from R two two family residential to CBD Central Business District and twelve fifty eight Little Belt Road from O one office R one one family residential and R three multiple family residential and parcel. Number 35-013-01-0168-001 from R3 multiple family residential to R1 single family residential. Okay. Uh, we don't have our consultant here tonight. Um, he, was, he was in his office working. He lost track of time. He's on his way. He's, he's on the way? Yep, so yeah. I just popped this in my head into his office and I was like, so it's waiting on your arrival. What time is that? <laughs> okay, well, we'll give him a couple of minutes and uh, so we can proceed with his report.
Mr. Ortega. Good evening, everyone. Apologies for my tardiness. I was preparing for the meeting. And well, we're waiting with bated breath for your report on the rezoning. Yes. So uh, I am prepared then for the middle note rezoning. So this is a continuation of our efforts to uh, implement the section of the master plan calling for the elimination of the 01 zoning district. So we've uh, accomplished this along Merriman Avenue with some rezoning and Cherry Hill. And so now before you tonight, our um, uh, rezoning proposed for 12 different sites to, once again, eliminate the 01 district and to also correct some inconsistencies in the zoning. The first um, set of uh, rezoning proposed is for six properties on Middleville uh, that they're proposed to go from 01 to C1, local business. So five are existing businesses. Uh, they include the Excel RC retail space, the, uh, the vacant Masonic Lodge, the, uh, there are two doctor's offices, and then one dental office on, on the middle. Then um, there's also one home located at 1724 Middleville that is um, adjacent to the Masonic Lodge on the north, and it's currently a single family. Oh, if, if everyone can unmute their mic, so they're having a hard time picking up, but yeah, so if the button's up, it should be unmuted. Okay. So. All right, forgive me. Um, so as, as, I did, as I was mentioning, these uh, this rezonings for the O1s are for these first six properties uh, going from O1 to C1 local business. Uh, five are existing businesses. Uh, that's the Excel RC uh, retail space, uh, the vacant Masonic Lodge, uh, two doctor's offices, uh, and one dental office. There's also a single family home at 1724 uh, Middlebelt uh, that's adjacent to the Masonic Lodge on the, on the north. It's currently a single family rental home and the owner would actually like that designated C1 as well. They're proposing, uh, they were in discussions with the property owner, he suggested that he re rezone the C1 so that that could allow for uh, further commercial development in the future for that site. Um, so C1 uh, rezoning will permit uh, these retail sales and the, ser and the service uses um, on these properties. The C1 district would, would also technically allow carryout restaurants, but that would require special land use approval. Um, just a reminder that the C1 rezoning would not permit drive-throughs, it would not permit auto sales or gas stations, bars, smoke shops, party stores, you know, pawn shops, those are not permitted in the C1 district, so they would not be allowed to be established on these properties. Um, C1 zoning of these properties will allow the existing uses uh, to continue and allow for a wider range of uses in the future uh, should they be uh, reoccupied. Or, so um, looking at the standards for rezoning, uh, these, uh, this proposed rezoning would be consistent with the existing, uh, with the uh, goals of the master plan to create commercial uses that are intended to serve residents' needs. Uh, this would continue the implementation of the master plan and would be compatible with adjacent property when these commercial C1 uh, sites would be developed in accordance with those regulations. So with that in mind, we would recommend approval, uh, recommend uh, the uh, rezoning of these sites uh, for C1 to the council. Okay. Uh, next we'll open the public hearing. Does anyone have any comments or anything they wanna say about uh, the uh, proposal for these rezonings? If so, uh, step up to the podium and uh, tell us who you are. I don't see anyone interested in coming up. I, I, I will ask again is that if anyone is interested in making a comment in the public hearing, please come forward. Seeing no one, we'll move on. <coughs> and uh, do we have any written uh, communications concerning this? We have not received any written communications. Oh, okay. Then we'll close the public hearing 
at uh, 640. And move on to the uh, discussion with the uh, Planning Commission. Uh, the only uh, question I have is rezoning the, the one house at, uh, at Bakken Middle Belt to uh, C1 since that is currently a single family residential and I know the owner would like it to be uh, commercial but he doesn't have a proposal before us at this time. I wonder if that's appropriate or, and that as you said is it uh, in line with the master plan for that piece of property? It would be because the master plan um, proposals all properties on middle but to go to be rezoned or to be utilized as a mixed use. This is another location in which the master plan envisions a transition uh, in this corridor from single family further south, south of uh, um, uh, on Middle Belt, transitioning to a mixed use before it reaches the CBD uh, higher density uh, uh, uses at Ford and Middle Belt. So the, um, so the issue with that is that the, the, the zoning or the master plan then states that for this mixed use designation, future land use designation, it could be either done under a commercial designation, it could be either done under a, uh, a new zoning district to create a brand new mixed use district or um, do, utilize redevelopment as a PUD. Uh, now the problem with that is that uh, you know, we've opted to begin our mixed use opportunities on Ford Road. And so, um, you know, the, uh, the ability to uh, uh, have this site be utilized as anything else, C1, wouldn't make the most sense, but you're correct in that there's no current designation, I mean, no current proposed commercial designation. Um, I guess the only thing about uh, this particular site being rezoned to commercial, that would be an approach where some communities take where you rezone and rezone sites with the intent of seeing, uh, getting one step closer to that eventual goal of having commercial on the property. So rather than let that, and, and honestly, and we'll, in a minute here, we'll look at two different pieces of property in this very corridor that for some reason rezoned office when they were single family homes on it. And I, I'm not sure why those were done in the past, except possibly they were rezoned to 01 to encourage them to be utilized as offices. So that's a similar approach. But once again, it's, 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 an, it's an approach. It's not necessarily something that you have to do, but it's just something that if we can did, be sometimes done. If we did done. rezone it to C1, that would make it an existing non-conforming use and the, the house couldn't be expanded, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And so that's why through some of these other rezonings we've done and what we'll, we'll talk and discuss in a moment, we have been trying to rezone properties to make sure that they could allow for investment. I guess the issue with this is that currently as a zoned 01, the, the, the house can't be expanded now. So rezoning it to C1 uh, is the same situation for that existing structure. That existing single family home can't be re uh, reinvested anyway. So by rezoning it to R1, um, then the property owner has the option of investing in that existing structure and that existing home and maybe, maybe doing additions and, 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 and encouraging a residential home on that site. Or if they did want to move forward commercial, they would have to come before you and at that point in time with a proposal, with an idea in hand. But I guess one other aspect about rezoning, uh, remember, is that um, when they come before us, if they just do a straight rezoning, like say, in the, like say he goes to R1 now, and then in the future he goes to C1, just because they, get a, they request a C1 in the future and get it approved, they aren't necessarily required to come in and do uh, a project at that point in time. You know, that rezoning is not tied to a particular project because they could be rezoned for any future, you know, for some point in the future. He could be doing it for marketing purposes of saying, hey, this site is viable as a commercial site and, and market it that way. 
So, so as you said, it wouldn't change the current status because it's 01 now and it's a non-conforming use as is, so it would remain that way. That's correct. Okay, uh, any other comments? Yes. Is there any reason we're not looking at zone use like C2 or C3? So when the buildings become available, we can do it for different uses? Get a more rate of people to come in? Right, so uh, C2 is, is the uh, neighborhood business and the, the real distinction between C1 and C2 is, is it allows for more restaurant uses by right. Uh, and then it does allow for more auto oriented, so like uh, minor auto repair as special use in the C2. Um, and then C3, is our enti highest intense use, and that allows all the other uses I was talking about, auto repair and uh, drive-through uses and, and uh, gas stations, that sort of thing. So the reason would be in th uh, that within the master plan, the idea was to, as a future designation, as mixed use. So mixed use meaning a mix of residential and commercial on, on the properties. And Usually when it comes to those higher intensity auto-oriented commercial like that are in a C3, um, that's usually doesn't lend itself to being compatible with a, with a resident, with a on-site residence. Uh, so that's why, you know, the C3 designation doesn't that. And, and also within the master plan itself, the zoning plan that says this future land use designation is equivalent to this zoning district it does list C1, it might list C2, but it does not list C3. Um, and another reason would be the middle belt seems to have a little bit more of a residential character that might want to be uh, preserved uh, in the area. So that's that was why the designation went with C1. Thank you. Anyone else have a comment or a question? Well, we need uh, to, we need a recommendation to the council, if someone cares to make a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, recommend approval by the city council for agenda item G1A through D. I'll second. Support. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, comments on the motion? <coughs> okay, would you take the roll, please? Commissioner King? Aye. Commissioner Walls? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Kalidas? Aye. Chairperson May? Aye. Passes 5 0. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, PPL. 23-0030, request for site plan approval to construct a new apartment building at the northeast corner of Arcola Avenue and Cherry Hill Road in the R3 multiple family residential zoning district. Mr. Ortega, if you'd start us off, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. So this um, is an 18,000 square foot vacant lot uh, and the applicant is proposing an eight unit, uh, two story apartment building. Um, they have been before you back in December with a set of plans um, and so the applicant has made changes based on uh, my initial review. They've corrected inconsistencies between the sheets uh, and, and provide, made some revisions uh, to provide additional detailed information with regards to the building elevation and the floor plan um, and uh, provided some additional information with regards to the landscaping. So. Based on the plan that's in front of you uh, and on the site and the site plan proposal, they're still going to be required to attain four variances from the zoning boards of appeal. Uh, they still will need a minimum lot area variance to allow for eight units on the site. They would still need a minimum side yard setback from the east property line. Uh, currently, they're part and they would need a variance from the standard that requires parking lots that does not allow parking lots to be located in the required front yard. Technically, they have two front yards, one on Cherry Hill, one on Arcola. By having that parking lot on the Arcola, between the building and Arcola, they're in the, technically, the Arcola front yard. So they're gonna need a variance for that, for that parking lot location. And then they're, they're gonna need a variance for the dumpster located in front of the building. That dumpster location is in between, once again, the building location and Arcola. So technically, that, that's not supposed to occur, so they would need a variance from the ZBA for that dumpster location. 
Now, while these are four variances, they have reduced uh, from originally they needed eight variances, so now they've reduced it to four. Uh, so based on the site plan in front of you, they are in compliance with the remaining ordinance requirements except for there are some few, a few uh, outstanding items. Um, some minor things, like for example, the landscape plan uh, needs to be signed by an a landscape architect. The building plans need to be stamped by an architect. Um, I do, we do need some detailed cut sheets for the proposed uh, building amount of light fixtures. Um, there's a minor text revision necessary for their uh, sidewalk construction detail. But then one, uh, probably the most significant outstanding issue is the fact that the landscape ordinance does require uh, screening along Arcola Avenue uh, from the parking lot and, and uh, the frontage. Um, so but now the PC, uh, the zoning ordinance does allow the PC to not, the planning commission to not only uh, uh, modify the, the requirement of that uh, screening, but it also allows the planning commission to allow for that um, l landscaping to be located in the public right of way. So Arcola Avenue is a garden city street. Uh, and in theory, they, they could be allowed to plant landscaping within the Ar uh, Arcola Avenue right of way. So on the, between the sidewalk of Arcola and the Arcola travel lanes, plant some, some uh, shrubs, uh, low-lying shrubs that could, uh, when I say low-lying, hopefully they, they would have to grow to probably a 30-inch 30, 30 height uh, to allow for some type of screening um, within the right-of-way. So you could either, you could allow for that to occur, you could, you could minimize the landscaping required. The other alternative would be for them to either obtain a variance from that standard or shift everything to the east. But if they do that, then they're reducing that setback of the building to that east property line. So the, the, landscape, the zoning ordinance does give the planning commission a lot of leeway with regards to that landscaping standards and what we're trying to, what the city's trying to accomplish. I'm trying to recall some locations in the city where that does occur, and I, I, I'll be honest, I can't think of it right off the bat, but given the residential, well, the transition in character from the commercial nature on Cherry Hill along, along Arcola to the residential. It seems like that, that uh, screening would still provide the effective result because a lot of that screening is gonna be to the uh, commercial property on the west side of Arcola. There is a portion of the site that will be adjacent, uh, excuse me, across the street from a single family home so that would probably be the, the most uh, place with the most robust uh, landscape screening. But that's the option uh, that you have in front of you. Uh, require compliance with the standard or allow for a modification. So with that, uh, I take any questions you have on, the, on this proposal. Well, that landscape scapes screening in the front is because of the parking and the parking is not supposed to be in the front, according to the ordinance, is that correct? Well, the, so the, the landscape screening is required along any frontage uh, anyway. So if, if, if there was no parking in the front, they would still need some type of landscaping between the building itself and that front lot line. Okay. Because it's, it's a streetscape screen, uh, landscaping. Okay, uh, well, let's hear what the uh, applicant has to say. Are, is there a representative? for the applicant here? Yes, sir. Could you tell us uh, who you are? And My name is uh, Ali Kalaf. I'm the architect for uh, this project. Uh, thank you for the uh, great presentation. I think he explained everything uh, for you. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to add. He explained everything, and we're ready to uh, any recommendation from you any changes you recommend us to change, we, we will do it. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, if that's it, why don't you have a seat and we'll, yeah. if we have any further questions, we can bring right. them up later. All right, thank you. Okay, let's uh, open this up to the commission for discussion. I know I have several issues with this plan. The uh, I don't, I don't believe the, the plans are substantially in compliance with the ordinance at this time. I think they need a lot of work before we can say they're 
in, at that point. And my biggest issue is having parking in the front of the building when our ordinance requires the parking to be at the rear of the building. And I think there are, there are ways to do it, although it would require another variance to, uh, to get the uh, setbacks correct and make room for the parking. But uh, there, are, there are several variance that, variances that need to be uh, approved to, get, to make this work the way it's done. And uh, I, would, I would just like to see some of this, some of it, as you said, are minimal things like having proper stamps on the plans and things like that, but I, I believe that um, we could make this work with the parking in the rear by, uh, by moving the building and it would require about an eight foot variance from the, the front setback to do that, to make room for parking in the rear. But then we also have the issue of having too much building on the site according to the, uh, the ordinance. There's, uh, the size of the lot would only be adequate for seven apartments as you mentioned, and uh, they want to construct eight. So the size of the building is an issue too. And that, re that makes uh, it necessary to have another uh, variance for the, uh, the north or south setbacks. So there's, there's several things here that have to be considered. Uh, Anyone else have any feelings about this? I, I feel this is probably the second or third time this gentleman's come in front of us. I've been in the neighborhood, I've checked it out. I think if this building is built for plan, outside of a couple landscape things, as long as he can obtain the variances from the zoning board, I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't pass it through, because it'll probably be the nicest building in that area for at least a half a mile. On Cherry Hill, well, the way it's constructed right now. Okay, anyone else have a, uh, yes? So I'm only counting 14 of the parking spots in front of the building. Are the other five off of Arcola? They're, that where I'm seeing them? They're actually um, parallel parking spaces along the Arcola frontage. Arco There's oh, five those, more. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the print's so small, okay. And it's yeah. enough room for a garbage truck to come in? It, it is actually, yeah, the turning radiuses would work. That's all I have. But again, the, the dumpster would be at the front of the building. That is correct, yeah, that's true. Anyone else? I guess I'm not concerned about the dumpster placement as much. Maybe they could put some brush or trees or something around it, maybe help close it in. But if you drive around the city, there's a lot of buildings that we have existing that the dumpsters are on the side or in the front. No, nothing surrounding them at all. Mm -hmm. Well, just because we have some existing buildings that don't meet the code doesn't mean we should encourage that. I think we should. No, but I don't you know we have an obligation to try to uphold our <clears throat> ordinance. That's what we're here for to make sure that these plans meet the code and are built according to the ordinance. It's not our it wasn't our decision to create the ordinance the way it is. This is the ordinance that we have. So I'm, I personally don't think that um, we should, just because it happened someplace else, that could have happened long before the ordinance was written and it's just a, an existing nonconformity. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about the, uh, the dumpster or the parking. I, I actually was more focused on the lot size. Um, 
I don't know, Mr. Ortega, can you tell us the, the variance in the lot size compared to other buildings in that area? Do you have any perspective? Um, in that area, I believe there's only, there really is only one other apartment building directly to the west on Cherry Hill that would uh, be comparable. And I'll be honest, I don't know the number of units in that site because it's, uh, it's been there for quite a while. So I'm not sure what the what density it was built at at that time. It's something we could take a look at um, in terms of whether that's um, whether this proposed building and the new st and the current standards are less than or greater than that. I mean, it could be that actually that um, that's a higher density right now that existing building. But I just don't know. I mean, it could be less too. So um, that is something to look at um, with regards to that. A uh, density the, issue, and so. I think one of the challenges is I, I realize we have investors who are trying to really maximize the space, but there seems to be a trend where it's always one more, or two more than right. the site is really permitted to. Have. So that just creates challenges, right, with us trying to just fast track this and get it approved. Um, but I'm good for now. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, well, do we have do we have a motion to uh, approve table or deny? Uh, just a point of information for everyone, uh, Fred. I hear what you're saying with regards to the possibility, basically, of flipping the building in the parking lot, so then have the building on the fr Arcola frontage, um, because then, in theory, they could have enough parking to the rear of the building. Um, I guess the only issue with that would be is that um, then he would they would need a variance. Uh, it's a 30-foot front yard setback for that Arcola Avenue. Yeah. Uh, setback, and so if they do have the same configuration, basically, and once again, if it's just flipped, like you were saying, then it would uh, be uh, 30 feet setback required. But they're having, um, but it would probably most likely still be 17 feet. So you're looking at a 13 foot variance, whereas. Well, I was looking at an 8 foot variance. Why? Why do you think it would be a? 17 foot variance. Because uh, the set, required setback on Arcola is 30 feet for a front yard? Yeah. For right now, uh, right now they have considerably more than 30 feet. But, if you flip -flop, but, it, but in order to get the parking lot behind the yeah, building. They, in order to get the parking lot behind it, uh, you'd, you'd need 20 feet from the wall for the parking stall. Right. You'd need a two-way drive, 24 feet, yeah, and a five-foot sidewalk, I would assume. Right, but then in order to, so then it's a matter of if they could fit, squeeze five more parking spaces along that. Well, that's the other thing, if they're, if they're reduced by the number of units they have, it would re also reduce the, uh, the parking. True. And then I guess in theory, so the one other issue with that then could be in theory they could put parking along that northern property line uh, because you'd have to have an access drive. They wouldn't get an access drive off of Cherry Hill because that's Wayne County. It'd be no, very but difficult. there would be plenty of room on it for an access drive on the north end of the building. Correct. Yeah, yeah, like basically shipping that building to shifting it to the west and that distance. And that would be a spot where they could also put a dumpster behind the building. Exactly, yeah, yep. And then the, and the only thing then would be like all the, the, that parking and would be adjacent to the, uh, the duplex that's on the northern side. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a matter of the character of the use. Because like you said, right now you are getting, this would be proposing, yes, this is the nicer building, but then you have the parking lot in front. And how that front parking lot relates to the commercial and also the residences on uh, Arcola versus flipping it and then if, if you could possibly get like a 20, say a 22 foot setback off of Arcola, then you have a two story building uh, 22 feet from the street. It's not horrible. I mean, I, I mean you know, that's, that's something that's not 
it's just, it's just a matter of what you feel, what people would feel would be more appropriate. Because I guess a 22 foot building, then you have landscaping in front of it. You don't there's, have the parking, you have the landscaping. Still room for so. landscaping in front of it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, it'd be, it'd be they, and they, they, the landscaping that's required on Arcola could be placed there in that 22 feet. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of what you think could work um, with that. So yeah, it's just, and, and there'd still be variances, so it'd be a front yard variance. They wouldn't have that anymore, they'd still, if, whether they wanna go for the density variance, and then it would be the... And they wouldn't need the, um, the dumpster variance. Yeah, the dumpster variance or and the parking lot variance. Parking variance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we eliminate three of them? Two of yeah, them at least. Two of them. Two of them at least. Can we ask the applicant? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Can we invite you Could, to comment on our conversation regarding the building location, whether or not that was conducive with what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, I would, I, I would propose this to the owner. He was uh, consistent and like he wants the building to be near the Wendy's. So yeah, I, I will talk to the owner and we'll check. Uh, and I, I will tell him that we need this to be approved. We need that to be approved. Well, can you just help us understand what, I'm just curious, like why it's just his preference or is there a reason that it helps him achieve a goal? I mean, I think it was, uh, it was just for like how the building will look like from both sides, Arcola and, uh, and uh, Cherry, Cherry Hill. Hill. Yeah, other than that, I don't have any. Okay, another thing, I mean, it wasn't more of an aesthetic thing to me was the east-facing wall of the building is just a big brick wall with no windows, no architectural detail, and especially if we're going to put parking in the back, I know the inside of that wall is corridor, mm -hmm. but I think it would enhance it if we put a few windows along those corridors on that wall to look out over the parking area and people would probably feel more comfortable being able to see their vehicles too, as well as making the building look more attractive, in my opinion. Uh, I do have a question. If we're asking to move the building forward, you know, where the parking spot is, wouldn't then like, the front of the building face the parking lot or? It would face Wendy's. It's no, the front of the, well, it, he doesn't have to flip the building. Uh, the front the building can still face Arcola the way it does now, I believe. Yeah. Could he flip, but could he still flip it though? And so I the windows know. are facing the parking lot and not Arcola? I don't know why he'd want to do that, but. Sorry, yes, go ahead. Well, then, the, then the, the part of the building facing our cold would be a brick wall. Yeah, and which isn't going to be very attractive, I don't think. Right. Yeah, and forgive me, it's when I said flip, flip, I meant the but location. I understand but, yeah. that, but still, I mean, you look at an apartment, all you're going to see is like some landscaping, and then there's a street. I think people would want to see maybe more of a parking lot, just looking out more. I think the, uh, the fact that we aren't allowing parking in the front is not so much for the people in the building because all of the current buildings are required to have parking at the rear. Right. It's more for the neighborhood than people looking out to see their cars. And I, I think maybe landscaping would be a little more attractive than a parking lot. As the landscape, as the trees that are required on Arcola would grow, if the, the buildings, if all the units were facing west and facing Arcola, eventually the trees would grow and they'd be looking at the trees. It'd be probably more attractive. That would be definitely more attractive in my mind. Yeah. And then they'd be looking down, slightly down Cherry Hill, which is a little bit more residential as you go down that way versus they were looking the opposite eastward towards, they'd see the intersection of Cherry Hill and Ingster, and then they'd see the re what's in Dearborn Heights and everything, which is eventually it gets residential, but it's a little bit more 
commercial development over there. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I guess my my opinion is I'm not too worried about the building location. I was just curious whether there was a reason. Um, part of the reason why I'm not too worried about it is across Arcola, it looks like it's already another parking lot. It is. Um, so there's two homes, um, and I kind of think I understand your point around if I'm, if I'm in that house and I'm looking across the street, would I rather see a building right there, or would I rather see almost a little bit of space between me right. and the building? I might actually prefer to see mm -hmm. a little bit of space between me and the building. Um, my, my concern was just the density, but I don't have a substantial concern with the proposal. And with regards to the variances and the density issue, you know, the applicant is choosing to do eight and they're choosing to do go to the ZBA, so they have to present their case to the ZBA that warrants getting that. And then actually if they, if they do get it, then their proposed floor plan would be for eight units, but if they don't get it, I would think in theory they could just change one of those units, make one of these units larger, and then they'd have a seven unit building. So the building would be the same size, just seven units. But the applicant, I guess based on their marketing and whatever their reasonings, re, the reasonings probably because in terms of the dollars per square, they, where foot they could get for the number of units, they, they feel the need to get the eight. And they have the option to ask but then they have to present to the ZBA that they it warrants, you know, granting a variance. I have one more question. So if he, when they go to the ZBA and get, and get everything, are they coming back to us because we're not sending this, if we approve this, are we sending this to council? No, no well, this oh. is, oh, that, okay, yeah, well, yeah, it was sure. just to be, our recommendation would be if you were to uh, have any kind of motion on the positive, any motion would be approved contingent upon the applicant receiving a variances. The, the four sighted variances. They would have to get all four variances in order for that. To that particular through. site plan to be approved. Okay. And if they don't get them, whatever, if they only get three of them or two of them or whatever, then they would have to come back to you for that final site plan that is in compliance with whatever variances they did or didn't get. Okay, thank you. I could ask one follow up. Yes. So when, if the zoning board was to support it, does it then have to go to council? No, if, if, okay. if this is just straight construction. So if it gets approved by the ZBA as is, then they would then they would have us an approved site plan if you voted in the positive but you know that would be once again you would be voting in the in the positive for what's proposed in front of you right now with my recommendations for them for the edits uh, and then they'd go to the zba and if they get the variances then they're then that site plan that you last seen as approved if they don't get all four they will have to come back to you for at least one, two, three, or all four revisions, or revisions based on what variances they don't get. So. Okay, is, yes. I'm sorry, just one more. So, <laughs> as uh, the representative of the applicant, are you aware of all of, that, all of those yes. steps? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, does somebody want to make a motion either to approve table or deny? I'd like to make a motion. To approve the plan is presented pending uh, variances approved. Uh, you need to also include the uh, recommendations uh, if that's your intention um, on our uh, report from Mr. Ortega. The minor edits to the. Yeah, uh, with, with the minor edits that need to be done also. Is there support? support. Oh, okay. Uh, any uh, questions or comments on the? Yes. It, just one comment. Um, if you end up going with the building on the east side of the lot, we had talked about landscaping around the dumpster enclosure. Is that? I'm sorry. Is that in the plan right now, or is that something we want the applicant to include? Uh, I didn't address that specifically in my letter. Uh, you, as a planning commission, can make modifications to the landscape standard. So if you were o okay with landscape screening in Arcola, uh, if you could provide me some direction on, on, the prefer on your preferred location of landscaping and the type of landscaping, that would be helpful. And if, um, if I could, just my, my reason I'm asking is, so if I'm in one of those two houses and I'm looking across the street, am I gonna see a dumpster? Yeah. Maybe okay. some urban light or something. That's what I'm, I guess I'm asking is that, a commitment you're making to uh, that I'm not looking at a dumpster. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna we have, need, we're going to have we landscaping. Need, we need to include that in the approval motion yeah. if we want yeah. that done. Yeah, I would recommend that you put those kind of notes in, in the motion. And you would be, if, if you're, Frank, if you wanted to make that, you would ask the motioner to, uh, for amendment, if that, is that correct? Larry, would you care to amend yes. your motion so to I'll include that? The motion to include the screening of landscaping around the dump truck. And sorry, last, yeah. not to make it more complicated, but then also if I could address the issue of the Arcola Avenue landscaping, would you, do you not, or you do want, or don't want a, a hedgerow in Arcola Avenue? It's up to you. I, no, I personally don't think it's gonna matter either way. In, in the hedgerow with the residences all the way down, so. No, but they don't have a parking lot in front of their house either. No, right. they do park in front of their house. Yeah, but they don't have headlights. The hedgerow would block the headlights. And that's parking. typically why we do require some type of landscaping screens to, to allow for, because of uh, in a commercial or multifamily landscape uh, parking lot, there's more frequent trips just for na the nature of the number of people that live there. So whether the how the headlights sweep sometimes is an issue. I mean, yeah, we could require a hedgerow of at least 30 inches tall in the easement. If you want, yeah, if that's if what you, you want. want to add that to the motion. And supporter agrees to that? I do. Okay. And can you please, Brian or Jake, can you repeat? Make sure we have everything in <laughs> 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 Yeah, as of now, it's going to be a motion to approve upon applicant meeting the uh, recommendations listed within Mr. Otega's report, uh, one, two, two A, two B, two C, two D, three, as well as the addition of uh, landscaping around the dumpster enclosure and a 30 inch hedgerow along uh, the front section of parking. Thank you. Okay, any other questions about the motion? Comments? Take roll please. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Felitas? Aye. Commissioner King? Aye. Commissioner Wallace? Aye. Chairperson May? Abstain because I'm going to have to be voting on this at the ZBA. Got the motion uh, passed oh. 4 0. Okay, motion's passed. Uh, your next step would be to go to the ZBA for your variances. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <coughs> May I ask when you're breaking ground? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. You don't have a date. Okay. Not until he gets approval. <laughs> yeah, it might. It might be a little while longer. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next item is PPL two three dash zero zero three zero. Uh, request for site plan approval to construct a new townhouse residential building at three zero seven one two Pardo Avenue in the conditional R3 multiple family residential zoning district. Mr. Ortega, would you start us off? Yes. Um, I'm sure we're all familiar with this particular location. This uh, right here at, at this location is, it is a 20,950 square foot lot that has been conditionally rezoned uh, with the city to an R3 multiple family to specifically allow for a 10 unit uh, townhouse style development. Uh, so that conditional uh, rezoning outlines specific site standards uh, for the development in terms of um, uh, the building location and screening along the west property line uh, and parking in compliance with our ordinance standards and um, the design and style of that proposed building. Uh, so the plan before you tonight um, is in compliance uh, substantially, we believe, with the, with the conditionally rezoned agreement, and conditional rezoning agreement. Uh, however, there are just, uh, there are some issues that are um, still outstanding. Um, so as I mentioned, when it comes to the dimensional requirements, uh, they, they, the, the plan in front of you, um, it's either in compliance with the conditional rezoning agreement, like for example, the density issue, uh, the lot minimum area uh, is allowing for 10 and they're proposing 10 units. Um, 
and then they do meet uh, the other standards in terms of uh, requirements for height. Uh, the height and the building is the same as proposed in the conditional rezoning. Um, one note we just need is that, that, that the, uh, they note that the front yard setback will be 26 feet uh, for the dimensional standards. Uh, with regards to the building design, uh, the applicant had proposed at the, at, uh, from the Planning Commission and then in front of City Council a particular style of building with peaked roofs, uh, multicolored, uh, different uh, style of uh, horizontal uh, hardy board siding along all elevations and the elevations before you tonight are consistent with those uh, proposed um, uh, elevations from the original agreement. Um, and e these units will have all their own exterior door uh, for face for each individual, so that makes it a townhouse style development. Uh, with regards to the parking standards, uh, the parking itself, uh, the location is consistent with the plan and it is to the rear of the building uh, and is in compliance with our zoning. Uh, the required number of spaces uh, is compliant with the condition rezoning and compliant with our ordinance. They are providing one ADA uh, compliant space, which is consistent with the ordinance requirements. Um, they are providing a uh, screening wall along the west property line, and the cross-section detail on this site plan is consistent with what was on the condition rezoning plan. Uh, and there also is a dumpster enclosure uh, proposed on the north side of the parking lot. Um, so there are, however, some additional items that need to be uh, addressed. Number one, uh, so one of the main issue, one of the issues would be the landscaping required. Uh, the landscape ordinance does have uh, specific requirements for um, for a uh, based on the number of dwelling units, and then also based on the frontage. The fact that there's a front frontage both on Pardo and on uh, and on and the uh, other a shotka right there. Um, so based on all those standards for row for because it's a corner lot, and then based on the number of dwelling units that I, that the ordinance requires for multiple family apartments, excuse me, multiple family developments, um, the site is actually required to provide 34 trees plus 82 shrubs on this site. Right now, the applicant is proposing 12 deciduous trees and 14 shrubs. And based on the size of the building, based on the size of the required, the, the required parking, the amount of green space available for the landscaping is just physically not capable of handling those number of trees. Based on the required setbacks for a growth for the crown area of particular trees, you just can't fit that number of trees on this site um, based on this requirement. So as we know with the landscape ordinance, the planning commission does have the ability to modify those standards as required. Uh, the applicant is proposing, uh, as I mentioned, 12 deciduous trees and 14 shrubs. Uh, it does feel though that this site could accommodate more, uh, more landscaping that would be appropriate. Uh, we would recommend the ability of, uh, to have additional uh, evergreen shrub, uh, evergreen trees, excuse me, along that west property line uh, adjacent to the uh, screening wall. And then um, we'd also recommend actually uh, some other things that would uh, help with the site would have a greater variety of uh, tree species and, and, and shrub species rather than have one uh, uniform style, one uniform species that could be susceptible to you know, diseases or infestations or something like that where then suddenly all the trees are killed from one particular infestation. If they had a variety of trees that would allow for uh, their investment in the landscaping to be maintained. So we would recommend a, a several different type of species for the, for the trees and for the, uh, and the shrubs. Um, and, so, and so the level of that compliance uh, is up to the planning commission with regards to how, where the location and the quantity and the, and the style of that landscaping should be. Um, going back again to the uh, Landscape standard, you know, we, we rec possibly recommend that they, they work with a landscape architect to have appropriate spacing for these uh, future, future uh, landscaping. And then the two other things just remaining is the fact that uh, there's no lighting uh, photometric plan has not been provided. Uh, if the applicant is being proposing to have lighting, we would recommend a photometric plan be included. Uh, given that the parking lot is located to the rear, uh, it does seem appropriate to have uh, that lit and it would be, have minimal impact on any residences because once again, it's to the rear of the building. And then uh, 
the site plan is required to have sidewalks provided on Pardo and Shotka, so that needs to be uh, provided. So in the end, we would recommend uh, that uh, the approval of these proposed plans contingent upon the applicant submitting a revised set of plans addressing the landscaping, the lighting, and the sidewalk issue. And with that, I'll take questions. Okay. Uh, why don't we move on to the applicant? Uh, do you have, would you like to come forward and uh, make your presentation? Thank you for working on us, on working with us on this project. I believe we've met all the requirements. Um, if there's anything else we need to do, please let us know. But I believe, um, like Mr. Ortega said, that we've met all the requirements. There's a few things that have to be done, and that can be done, I believe, as we begin. So we're hoping you can give us your blessing so we can start. We're kind of excited to, to get it going, and I think you'll really be pleased with the end product. Okay, uh, I have one question for you. I, I noted that uh, the front setback on the plan was 21 feet instead of 26. Was that just an error or? This is an error that needs to be corrected because it has to be that. So the, the plan can be adjusted to note 26. Okay, you're, you're not aware of that situation. Oh, no, I, I understand that Mr. Ortega is aware of all of that. And, okay. And the, also the architect, so we're working okay. on to make sure you know everything's exact, exactly as you wanted. Okay, good. Well, thank you. Uh, now we'll open it up to the uh, commission. See, uh, Great. we have any other issues? Yeah, I, I bought a really nice hammer. We're ready to go. So whenever <laughs> you're ready. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, besides the uh, adjustment for the 21 to 26 foot setback, uh, there's only a couple of items that I have that uh, I believe you already noted on the, the plans. The, uh, the landscape plan, of course, and there seems to be a, a lot of room along the uh, The east and west uh, property sides on either end of the building that could, if not include trees, at least some some more shrubs in those areas. I do believe there's enough area for trees, um, some trees, more trees. Uh, the applicant did know that there's a uh, an outdoor area on the west side of the building. So, you know, something like shrubs around that patio area would enhance it well. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that and... Yeah, I, yeah I, I agree that they don't have room for 84 trees or no. whatever the number was, but no. I think we could probably add a few more. And uh, then the lighting, of course, has, we need a uh, photometric plan for that and uh, we need to provide sidewalks along Pardo and Shotka. So other than uh, those items, that's all I have. Uh, any other uh, comments from the commission? Yes. Do they have to have an irrigation system for the landscaping? A what? A irrigation system? Normally we uh, require an irrigation system so uh, their landscaping doesn't die the next year. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That uh, that's could sh certainly be included in the in the approval. Yeah. Just if if we were to prepare a motion, um, the landscaping is the only one that feels a bit ambiguous to me. The recommendation would it be appropriate for something like fifty percent more? For some reference to, you know, what the applicant has proposed, I think it's I'm sorry. Or we could leave it up to Mr. Ortega to okay. do it administratively, and uh, we can give contingent approval on 
these items being taken care of and he can approve it administratively when they come back. Mm -hmm. that's, and it's it, okay with you. Yep, and you could just give like more general comments like it's more a little like more direction. More, yeah, more direction like for example uh, prov by providing additional screening along Pardo or providing additional screening for the patio area or uh, you know how you'd like that that landscaping to fu landscape to function for the site. Okay. And it would be done consistent with landscape standards to once again make sure that the anything that's proposed isn't overcrowded so they'll they'll survive and thrive with land with things like irrigation. They the, the ordinance does require them to provide a method of watering the landscape areas and it spe actually specifically says while not required installation of an in-ground ir irrigation is encouraged. So yes and we have in the past made that uh, part of the approval. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we have any other comments or questions? Uh, I yes. Uh, so regard to the sidewalk, Kassan Kalov, the design engineer for this project, uh, regarding the sidewalk, um, we are willing to put the sidewalk along Shatka. It's going to provide connectivity from Ford Road to the neighborhood. However, the sidewalk along uh, Purdue, it's not going to go to anywhere. So we are the only property that is going to have sidewalk on that side. It's the city's uh, desire to have sidewalks put in on all new uh, developments. So, so you need one on Shaka and Pardo. That's fine. We're going to put it. But the only thing is going to uh, mislead the pedestrians who's going to go along that. So we I know can we can't make the, your neighbors put in sidewalks at this point, but we can require that you put in sidewalks. And, and as, as the chairman mentioned, there's also a, a general law ordinance that does require whenever any property changes hands, they do are required to put in land, uh, a new sidewalk. So for example, if the property owner to the west ever sells, at that point in time, they'll be required to put in a, a sidewalk. So it's, it's a city effort. It's, it's occurring over time. We know it's not going to be immediate, but uh, it's the city effort to, to uh, encourage pedestrian safety by having okay. a sidewalk. So. That's fine. I'm just like I worked with other cities, always like they have some kind of a bond or or like some kind of agreement. Like um, oh. if the city decide on putting the sidewalk, then um, like the neighbor, the neighbors, they have to chip in some some money for that sidewalk at a certain time. So it will be done at one time. Right. Well, it'll it'll be done if they sell their property. Okay. Definitely, because then they, the new owner would be forced to put in a sidewalk. But at this time, the city is not forcing current homeowners to put in sidewalks if they're not existing at this time. Okay. I'm just talking because I'm an owner of a business also in, in Garden City, so I don't want the city to look bad because I used to work for the city of Detroit, and we have a problem with something called side, sidewalk to nowhere. So yeah. I don't want that to happen. Well, here. we do have some of that situation now, <laughs> unfortunately, but we, we are attempting to expand our sidewalks so we can make the city walkable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, we need, we need some direction for landscaping, as you mentioned. Uh, does anyone wish to uh, provide some comments or direction for, yes? I think that Williams. on the west side of the building, they could probably get some more landscaping in next to the screen wall. Uh -huh. That would help block that also. So based on what they have on the other side, you're going to pick up probably at least four trees right there. And then maybe put some shrubs around the barbecue area, which would help out. Okay. Does that seem yep. uh, adequate yes anyone else have a comment about that Seems okay so fair. if that's okay yep, that'll we'll, work. Go, we'll go with that recommendation uh, we need the photometric plan for the parking area we need the uh, sidewalk the sidewalks and we need the uh, setback corrected to 26 feet on the Pardo side.
So if uh, we have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the site plan and resolve the following administratively through Mr. Ortega, a uh, enhancements to the landscape plan, including irrigation and providing additional screening on the west side of the building, at least, a photometric lighting plan, a sidewalk shown along Pardo Avenue and Shotka Road, any revisions as required by the city engineer and fire marshal, and an amendment to the site plan to show a 26 foot setback uh, off of Pardo. Support. Any questions or comments on the motion? Nope. Take the roll, please. Commissioner King? Aye. Commissioner Kalidas? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Walls? Aye. Chairperson May? Aye. Five zero. Okay. Congratulations. You're all set. Good luck. Yes. Uh, on that west side there, uh, near Jane's house, I, I know you want additional trees and shrubbery or whatever we can get in there. Whatever we can do to kind of give her as much privacy and, and make it look nice, we will do. So whatever we can squeeze in there. Well, okay. We well. Yeah. You and Mr. Ortega can work out the, uh, the details of the landscaping plan. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll make it nice for the neighbors and, and they'll, they'll like it. And of course the irrigation is very important. We don't want to lose any of the shrubs or any of the plants. I mean, they can get costly, very right. costly. But that's a good point and of course that, that's going to be done. So we appreciate you all. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, thank, thank you. We appreciate you moving into the city. <laughs> okay. Next, we have um, proposed city-initiated rezonings on the Inkster <laughs> Road area. We have dis discussion on uh, rezoning of lots due to elimination of the 01 office district. Are these the are these different lots than the previous ones? Yes. So the the previous ones we just did was for Middle Belt. Oh, okay. This is the last of them. <laughs> okay. So we have <laughs> this uh, is the last on Inkster Road. Lots on Inkster Road, uh, including 1769, 1757, 1753, 1749, 1647, 1501, 12. 11, 1139, 1061, 1049, 1035, 1021, and 975. Okay, action. Table for further discussion or motion to ske We need to schedule a public hearing for these? Yes. If so, we can either uh, Table it for thir further discussion or schedule a public hearing. Schedule a public hearing. I make a Most motion, motion. to uh, schedule a public hearing. Support. Motion's made and supported to schedule a public hearing. Uh, what would be the date? So the next meeting is um, April Thursday, April 11th. Okay. For April 11th. Any discussion on the motion? If I could just ask Mr. Ortega, is there anything unique about this recommendation? <coughs> that we had the example of the home, the residential that was in the 01, I think. Is there anything unique here with this? Um, not really. I mean, the, it is similar to what we've been doing. Uh, there are 01 properties. Some of them are commercial businesses or uh, uh, dentist offices or doctor's offices. Being proposed, we would go to C1. So very similar to the others. There are... Um, uh, Let's see. And then there are some existing uh, single family homes um, that would go, would actually be going to C1 again, a recommendation for that. A um, couple of things that are just unique is that there's one site that is a combination zoned O1 and parking. We're re recommending to maintain that separation, having a portion of the site rezoned to C1 to allow for the businesses but to keep that vehicular parking designation on the uh, west side of that lot, right at uh, Bach and, 
inks there, just so that way that there can be that um, that buffered use between the site and uh, commercial use in the adjacent residences. There's a house to the to the west and the houses to the south. So just that. And then probably the most unique situation is the fact that this does involve a lot of the property for the Santu funeral home. Uh, it's zoned 01, and it's another situation where this location is actually proposed to be mixed use. Uh, I think that's because there's just so much large acreage, not only owned by uh, uh, Mr. Santu, but also to the west uh, the, along there as well. And so, but the idea would be right now to rezone it to C1, and then if at any point in the future it was to be comprehensively redeveloped for something mixed use in nature, at that time that would be uh, addressed. But right now the idea would be just to rezone the Santu properties to C1 to allow for their continued use as a funeral home and associated um, residences and uses. Isn't there a house though on the, in that parking lot in Santu's? There is. There, there is. Um, uh, that's 1211 Inkster. That is actually it's zone C1, uh, but it'd be kind of a similar situation where uh, rather than uh, that house that, was, that we just uh, talked about on Millbelt, rather than being going back to R1 and allowing for the use, I guess the idea would be to uh, be a, more of a lateral situation. So the, their their situation would not change as it currently is, because right now that existing house is owned office, so they can't do any renovation, any modifications that increase the footprint. This would be a lateral move that would, changing the C1 would do that. Uh, and I, in this particular situation on Inkster, I've talked to some of the property owners, not to all of them, so I have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Santu to see what they'd like to do uh, on that site, so it might be something that they might, they might want to change that to R1, I'm not sure. But uh, with regards to the aerial, the portion of that site, I believe a portion of that site still might be used for the funeral home business. So that's the issue. If it was rezoned to residential, uh, it might impact um, the continued, well, the, any future expansion of the, of the funeral home use. Okay. But I'd, I've had some initial discussions with some of the property owners that haven't connected yet with them, but I would uh, have conversations with them. Any other questions or comments? Um, take the roll, please. Commissioner Walls? Aye. Commissioner Kalidas? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner King? Aye. Chairperson May? Aye. Motion carries from the public hearing 5 0. Okay. Other business and discussion items? None. Uh, commissioner's comments regarding planning and zoning matters? Uh, I have nothing right. tonight. Nothing? Nothing? I just had maybe a, a quick discussion. Have we ever thought about like surveying applicants that come before the commission to say, how was your experience with Garden City? What could we do better to solicit in, input? A lot of these investors or uh, applicants are dealing with other cities, getting other experiences. Yet I don't think we're taking the opportunity to collect their input. Is that something that? So you, that's something probably the, the business or the, the city could do through uh, the building department when they, right. when they do applications. And, but has there been anything like that done or talked about? Um, of, of going through that effort of, of uh, basically surveying the, the applicants? Well, I mean, yeah, for example, like, I mean, when you go to many businesses, when you finish, they give you a little survey if, you'll, if you're willing to take it right. to see if you were satisfied with your experience with them and if you have any complaints or suggestions. Mm -hmm. Maybe something like that would be worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that, that, that could occur. Uh, we haven't had any uh, direction from administration about them, but it's possible. I guess the only thing I would say is that just informally, uh, they do tend to, I guess I would say a person's experience is based on their, their own personal effort. Uh, as you might see with some of the plans that come before you, some of them are, are very professionally done. They, they've, they've invested a lot in those plans and those are the plans that get to seem to be done very quickly. 
um, sometimes when there's multiple revisions and revisions that that, that aspect might taint their uh, experience thinking and that it takes a long are time successful or the happier ones right yeah <laughs> and, and, and I'm just saying the amount of effort that they tend to put into it like if I know some of the plans that come before you might might seem like um, in need of, like like you've mentioned Frank at McFred in terms of uh, some plans they still need more work but you'll be surprised to see what they were before they got in front of you <laughs> let's just put it that way <laughs> from time to time I'll just I'll just leave it at that and so that might impact how they feel but that's not to say that something like that wouldn't be valuable in, in terms of what they what they do in the end the the most that everybody wants is just time they just want it done as quickly as possible but they don't understand the need you know sometimes these things take time because of state law we're required to take a breather in terms of the special land uses and then sometimes you know they oftentimes they'd want to submit a plan and like on monday and have it in front of this meeting in front of you today but that just doesn't give me enough time to actually review the plan and and i prefer setting it up and most communities do where the plan in front of you and the and the review letter are based on that set of plan there are a lot of times an applicant might say well i'm going to change this plan right now i'm like i don't know what you're going to change on that set of plans because i've had it in other applicants they might address the issues that i've done but they've also done other items and changed other things and then suddenly you have one set of plans that's revised and my letter doesn't reflect that so and i guess that's a we begin the survey now and I can ask you do you feel that's appropriate like do you like that the letter reflects exactly what's in front of you or would you be open to the idea of having revised set of plans that addresses those issues no I, personally I think if there are changes you need to have time to review it and address those changes properly rather than uh, tossing it out and uh, you know maybe we pick them pick up the changes or maybe we don't <laughs> exactly uh. I mean, maybe it's just something the commissioners can think about as I try to put myself in the applicant's shoes and it's like oh you've missed this you need to come back and then we'll meet it in a month and then you've got to go to the zoning board of appeals and then <laughs> you're so you're getting getting ping ponged around for months it while, is while you know time is money and people are trying to get a return on their investment so well maybe. sometimes they're being ping ponged like that but between different boards and commissions because they didn't follow the mm -hmm rules in the first place right. they're, no, trying to, they're trying to change things i understand i would just like to think about how we might uh, expedite when we can yeah. right when we can do ha have mr ortega handle things administratively and help the applicant move along would be my lean but okay I, I will say that the fact that you uh are comfortable approving plans contingent upon items the applicants uh, that have been working in other communities are very happy about that. They've always told me they're happy that they, they that they're confident in the contingencies because a lot of times if some some the minor things like changing the the sidewalk detail on here from four foot to five foot, believe it or not, some people might other planning planning commissioners say no, these plans aren't correct. Yeah, you got to come. You got to come back right. for something as small as that, which is to me no, that, that's the that impediment. That saves them a month and more right. money. Yeah, exactly because that's why I feel like a lot of those things are so I think that that is something you should feel comfortable um, kind of proud about the fact that you can being able to have that confidence and, and get a plan approved in that fashion does help greatly so. thank you mr. Williams I'm good, thank you. okay Mm -hmm. Jake? Yep. Okay. Did you have anything else for us, uh, Mr. Ortega? Uh, just next month, we will have one rezoning of the, um, well, in addition to the Inks to Road rezonings, get those done. Uh, the Metropolitan dealership has sold. Uh, so they would like, uh, that site currently has, I want to say it's 440 feet from Ford Road back is zoned commercial but that's almost the entirety of the building and then to the rear of that is zoned industrial the applicant is requesting to rezone the rear portion of the building that is where the um 
the fenced and uh, bermed screen is back, so uh, to be rezoned to industrial as well, because they would like to utilize the, the rear part of that building as, as industrial uses. So that'll be coming before you uh, next month. And um, one additional site plan review for a, a building on Park Lane that previously was approved for a medical marijuana grow operation. Uh, that was approved. It was never constructed by that property owner. They've sold, and now a new property owner is coming forth, and they'd like to, uh, they're applying for site plan construction for a medical marijuana grow operation. Okay. So that would be a, sorry, just in case anyone, uh, just to allay anyone's, any fears, this would be done under a care, under the Medical Marijuana, Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, this is the first act, so this would allow for caregivers to grow 72 plants. So each, there would be seven different rooms in the building and seven different caregivers. They'd have to provide their registration and then they have to provide the registration for six additional patients to maximize and allow for 72 plants. Uh, and that would, um, so this is what was approved previously. Uh, the applicant is proposing some minor modifications to that site plan, but this was previously approved as that. It was just never constructed. Um, and then some, re I'd like to get back to the rezoning, excuse me, the, the zoning amendments we talked about in terms of uh, accessory structures and, and, part, and lot coverage and that sort of thing. I just didn't want to drag these meetings on further with those amendment discussions. Okay. <laughs> well, our next regular planning commission meeting is Thursday. <coughs> April 11th, 2024, and if someone would care to make a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting's adjourned.